Hello, old friend. Another week. Another chance to make a great one of it. First, the most important thing. Don't forget this. Coffee. Well, you guys know the drill. I'm gonna get ready to go here. Get the truck warmed up. I don't have an assignment for today yet, so I gotta wait to see what I gotta do. But I'll talk to you in a little bit once I get everything going. Welcome to the vlog, though. We make daily vlogs, and if you're new here, you're welcome to subscribe down below. I've been doing this about 10 years now, so there's a lot to catch up on if you have the time. If you just wanna start from here, you can do that as well. You can find uh, the description, or down below this video in the description, explains a lot of my channel to you if you wanna go down there and take a look. The old Pete's hooked up to 605 today. Roll tight. I have four deliveries to make. Three in Winnipeg, one up in Arbord. Just doing our pre-trip on it now, making sure everything's working as it should. Make sure that there's premium compressed air in the tires. Making sure that these ratchets are far away from the lifted axle. Remember, we don't want those touching this tire here because this tire can still spin. All the brakes are engaged right now so that I can check the brake lights. All working good. License plate light working. Signals are working. Yeah, when these touch the ground, sometimes when you're going up a driveway or over a bridge connection, these will hit the ground and start spinning and that's okay. But if you have the ratchet touching the tire, that's not good shoes up the tire and that defeats the purpose of having it lifted to save it <laughs> then you have it lifted to destroy it and that's not good don't want to destroy it there's a signal in here in there I got to check all these straps it make sure they're still tight I'm gonna jump inside here see what it looks like This stuff will be going to Arburg. Yikes, it got dirty. Okay. Going up to Arburg. Looks like I got a forklift back there. Lots of boxes. I'm gonna see if I can get around there. Uh, can we get between here? Some more room on this side. I think that's for Arburg too. I got these three schools back here by the look of it. Gonna make sure everything is tied down to my satisfaction. Then we're gonna pull it on out of here. I think that forklift is coming off first. 10 a.m. appointment for that. And then these spools. I have two drops in the city. Might be these, I wonder. I think these pallets might be going into Winnipeg, not to Arbor. So we got these pallets. One, two, and three. And then that goes to Arbor. And that should be my whole day. Fancy. Fancy schmancy. Very nice. Brand spanking new. All the load securement. Oh, 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 oh. Let's, this is why we check it. Make sure it's all tight. That's exactly why we check it. Because the driver who brought it in here as it goes down the highway it all shifts and settles and if they don't consistently uh check to make sure the straps are still tight and you know like i did crawl all the way back here uh, they could be loose like that and you don't want freight uh, to be loose all right everybody make sure our trailer's not gonna fall off here all right it's time to get going tightened everything up stadium used to be.
get this gate to open for me. Number one, we've got to bring the, or we're going to leave the forklift here. Guessing I'll probably have to back into a dock. I'm going to go and uh, park somewhere over here and go and ask. Some docks off to my right here. I'm wondering if that's where I'm going to need to go down. All right, I'm going to get these un unhooked. They want me over there in door 11. I'm gonna roll it right off the back, so that means I've gotta roll this up here. All right. All right, the brand new forklift on their dock in their building. And off my trailer. One of four complete for today. The next one there is going uh, to the Actually, those spools and the pallets in front of it are going to two different places in the northwest corner of Winnipeg, up around uh, Route 90, up there if you're familiar with Winnipeg. These, I have to uh, return these ratchets to the driver. No, they're his. So I'll return those. Put these in the proper place so that they're not flying all over the place. Actually, these stay inside the trailer. They just go to the front. I'll put them underneath for now. These are aluminum. And you don't want them flying out of the trailer into traffic. That'll kill someone. We'll put it underneath here. That way we don't gotta worry about it. Right, right in over here all the other stuff and uh, those straps I'll put inside the truck because I have to remember to give those back to the driver and if I put those under here chances are I'm probably going to forget and then uh, he's not going to like me very much because he specifically tracked me down to ask me to return his equipment <laughs> these things belong to it's an owner operator who loaded this trailer all this stuff came from Indiana, the USA. All right, we're off to the races. Let's knock off these next two deliveries real fast and then we'll be on a nice country cruise up to Arbord, two hours north of here. to our last delivery in Arburg. Let's open up the trailer and I'm sure they saw me pull in already and get this unloaded and head on back. That'll be the whole day. Worked out pretty good, I think. Look at that empty trailer. It's weird coming here and not loading stuff up. Usually I load up stuff here and bring it back. Today I was unloading and I'm going back empty. <laughs> Finding my
my way back here to my my corner where I belong way in the back corner there's my pickup waiting for me hidden away from view no it's not like that I actually like the back corner I uh <laughs> I didn't. I can't say that I picked this spot, but I didn't argue with it, and I didn't fight it because I like that. That way, my pickup is way in the back corner. It doesn't have constant traffic driving back and forth past it. It stays cleaner that way. I know that if I park in uh, like my pickup, if I just wash it, and then I park it in another part of the lot where there's more traffic, the truck gets dusty the first day. Doesn't matter. All the traffic going back and forth, the truck gets dirty. I find back here, even though it's a gravel lot. There's hardly any traffic moving around way back here in the corner. So if I come to work with a clean truck, chances are usually I go home with a clean truck. Eh? Same thing with it. I know this truck is dirty and old as it is, but that, that that's fine. But, uh, you know, when I do wash it, at least I know back here it stays clean longer. I've said it before. I'll say it again. It's a work truck. And it works well. I've always I've always liked the older trucks better. What am I doing here? Am I in the proper... I want to make sure that I log myself out of here. I always log myself out of my e-log. Just in case if the shop needs my truck or if they want to fix something or if it needs to be moved. And whoever moves the truck, it doesn't get registered onto my e-log because that messes me up for the next day then. So when they climb in, it'll prompt them to log themselves in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're logged out. We're all good to go. Okay, that was a good day. It was a good Monday. It's time to go home for my rock star welcome. I heard Diesel had a little bit of an upset stomach this morning. I hope he's feeling better now. Thought I heard someone walking up behind me. <laughs> so uh, I was watching some Tim Pool. I watch him pretty much every day. I really like his podcast. Uh, and he also does just commentary. Uh, content on one of his other channels. I think his podcast is TimCast IRL. Uh, a lot of you know of him already. Maybe you found me through that. Uh, I know I comment in the comment sections every now and then, and uh, the responses seem to be pretty good there. Uh, I don't comment with the intention of gaining new followers myself, but I welcome you here anyways. I just want to comment my piece of my mind in the comment section as well, and I've, I've seen your responses. Some of you said, oh, hey, that's how I found you. Cool. He was uh, talking, I guess it would be last week for you, well he's been talking quite a bit recently about a trucker shortage. And it's interesting to listen to people who aren't in the trucking industry and who, like I grew up in it. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my dad was a trucker my whole life. I've been a trucker since I was 18 and I'm 34, 33, turning 34. I don't know how old I am. I was born in 88. And I've been a driver uh, up here in Canada this whole time. And we've had a driver shortage for longer than I've been alive. In Canada here especially. Like they, uh, they bring people in from all over the world to be truck drivers here in Canada. Uh, there's a lot of people here from Punjab. Uh, it's a province in uh, northern India. It also stretches into Pakistan. A lot of the drivers, like over 50% of them are from that region and there's such a, there's been such a big driver shortage here for so long that the, the, the people my age here, like I'm a millennial, maybe I'm an odd millennial because I feel like I'm kind of normal, but <laughs> most millennials my age, they don't want to drive truck, they, they feel like it's beneath them, right? And that's sort of a product of how our society has looked upon us for a very long time, us truckers. They always look at truckers as like, oh, you're just a trucker. A lot of people my age would be surprised how much you can make as a truck driver. No, it's not easy. No job is. If you want to be over the road, you got to be away from home for a little while. I was able to find this really great position where I'm in now after 14 years trucking, 10 years over the road or nine years over the road. I'm, I'm now in a position where I can be home every night. Uh, but it's, it's good, I can make a good living, support my family. I'm not a super rich dude. I'm not a super like uh, wealthy individual. I'm, I'm just like everybody else. We're just trying to get by one day at a time. And uh, there's always jobs in trucking, always. And the media now is starting to talk about, oh, there's a trucker shortage, there's a trucker shortage. 
it's all fear mongering. It's true, but they're using it for their own purposes. They're trying to get you to watch their, their content because fear and panic sells for the media. Yes, we have a shortage. Yes, we need more drivers. No, it's not a new thing. This is an ongoing issue. And it's one of the biggest reasons why I started this channel 10 years ago. I wanted to change the stereotypes of truckers. I wanted to, sh to show people like, hey, I'm a normal guy, just like you. And I drive a truck and I make a good good living and I'm, I love it. I love it. Maybe it's something you want to look into also. Maybe not, but at least you have an inside look into a trucker's life. Not just here on the job, but also at home with my home life. You get to see how how, how the whole picture is, as, as much as I can share with you anyways. So it, it's it's there's always been a trucker shortage. And yes, uh, I, I would love it if more people my age would get into it. But like I said earlier, it seems to be beneath a lot of them. You know, everyone wants to uh, get out of high school go to college, university, and then immediately expect to be successful. They, they immediately expect success. And they want the big house with the nice car and, you know, the big backyard and, you know, the golden retriever. And Sometimes, I'm not going to discourage you from going to college and university. I mean, it depends on what you want to do. If you want to be a doctor or a lawyer, that, that is necessary. But if you get into the trades... A truck driver, a plumber, an electrician, you can go to trade school or trucking school and make more money than some of these people who go there, get their fancy degrees and then look down their nose at you. And it's, it's a good job to have. I really enjoy it. I really like driving. I love driving big trucks every day. It's a thrill. I love getting up every morning, not knowing what's going to happen. It's a different thing every day. I'm not staring out at the same like office cubicle every day. Like, this is my office view. Like, right now, I'm just facing the tire shop. I know, but uh, you know, it changes. That's the best part. You know, tomorrow morning, I'm going to come in and sit in here, and my view's going to change again. I guess just to follow up on this, yes, there's a trucker shortage, but no, it's not new. It's something we've been dealing with. But I am thankful that they're now paying attention to it, and I'm thankful that people like Tim are talking about it because it is an issue that needs to be addressed. More people my age and more young people need to see trucking as a viable career as as a desirable career and that's what i'm doing right here on youtube so i left a comment in one of his videos and the comment got quite a bit of attention and i just said there's there's always been a, a shortage this is nothing new maybe in a sense we got busier so now we need even more drivers than we already needed before so maybe he's got a point there you know there is no absolute in this there is no it's a big industry. It's huge. And I'm up here in Canada, but we travel into the U.S. all the time. And so we go internationally across the borders, back and forth and back and forth. But this is, a, this is an ongoing thing in Canada, in the United States, in Europe, Australia. We need drivers. We need new young blood in the industry. Not that the old drivers are any of, a, of any less value. They're very valuable. Their experience is very valuable. But we need new young people. And if you're looking for work, I know a good place where you can come and work, all right? I know a very good place. We're looking for drivers just like everybody else, but we're the best. And that's why you should come and work here. We're all fighting for your attention. We're all fighting for you guys to come drive for us. I'm showing you firsthand what we do here. And I believe in this place. And I know what we do is awesome. And we do it the best. Wouldn't be a trucker Josh log without trucker Josh forgetting something. I'd forget my head if it wasn't attached. And I'd forget my name if it wasn't on my name badge. Let's see. Just to make double sure. Just double sure. The lights are off. Okay. Just wanted to be sure. Just in case. I can sleep better. I won't stay up all night thinking. Did he, did I close did did I did I close the doors? Did I turn off the lights? I got that song stuck in my head. Thanks, TikTok. What was I supposed to from? Ah, pothole. Pothole, don't hit the pothole. Every single day. And it makes my stuff go flying. Okay, oh. Nice. Nice. High five. Great success. Oh my. Oh my. Oh. Diesel.
Diesel, I heard you had an upset stomach this morning. Are you feeling better? Chevy's feeling great. Frank, I gotta poop, man. You gotta let me out. You gotta let me out, man. Yeah, we can say hello later. God, I like it. You step on me, I'll bite you. Chevy. Hey, Chevy. Thank you for not jumping up on me. Just jumping up in front of me. That's okay. I gotta poop. I gotta keep my fog out here, okay? Yeah, you guys go do your thing. Do your thing. You know, I found you, you were sleeping. Hey guys, come on. Come on, I got the wiener. Got the wiener. I know you're not very excited because it's just me, but I appreciate the tail wagging. I appreciate the effort. Oh, home sweet home. So Diesel, how's it going, buddy? You feeling okay? Feeling okay? I heard your stomach was grumbling this morning. You had the poops. Oh man, he looks good. Like I've been telling you recently, we're moving him on to a different food. And I took four weeks to get him moved on to this food. So slowly weaning him off the old food, getting his stomach used to the new food. His stomach's very sensitive when you change up his food. And I guess I still went a little bit too fast. So uh, I'm gonna change the mixture a little bit tonight and uh, move a little bit slower with that. His stomach was a little upset this morning. Looks like he's doing fine now, beating his brother up like usual. What are you guys doing? Hey, Diesel, Diesel, let go. Oh, I thought he was biting him. They bite each other all the time. It's all in fun though. They're not actually biting each other. They don't actually bite and hold down. They just hold each other's faces in their mouths sometimes. You know, like boys do. Okay, I'll get him. Diesel, hey, you pinned him, okay? The rules are when you pin him, you get off. Chevy always lets him win. I think he feels bad for him because he's kind of old. I heard that. I am not old. Look at me, I'm spry. I can still beat up my brother any day. He'll say, oh, I got him again. Got him again. Still got it, man. Looks like he's feeling all better now. Back to his usual weaselly self. I don't know what it was this morning. But went back to a, a mixture of his old food with his new food. He's eating just fine. And he went to the bathroom just fine too, so it must have just been... Uh... A passing upset stomach. It's all better now. Good boy.